Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this Mission Gold Pure Pigment Watercolor Set. I'm really excited. I'm going to open this for the very first time with you, you and I together on camera. And um, I just want to show you this really quickly. I haven't opened these yet, but I did take the sleeve off. This is very reflective and I don't want it on camera, but it's got like the sticker on it with the different flags and a language that I don't uh, speak or recognize. I can't read it. It has the AP uh, seal of approval up the top there, which is important. It says the pure pigment set includes 24 single pigment colors, but you are also going to get two um, 70, uh, seven milliliter tubes of white and black, okay? And your 24 colors will be in 15 milliliter tubes. Create unlimited beautiful colors by mixing pure pigments. All colors are good to excellent in light fastness. The box is gorgeous. And then on the back, um, you get all the pigment information and color swatches. I was really happy to see this. A lot of these colors here, in fact, most if not all of these colors, I recognize right away. Like Autumn Orange, PO36, that's Azo Orange. Uh, red Orange, PO73, that's Pyro Orange. I recognize the Hansa Yellows, the Quinacridones, the Ultramarines. So everything here, um, PB19 for the, for the uh, rose. So everything here looks really premium, good quality pigments. So let's go ahead and open it up. Oh gosh. Okay. So the box is gorgeous. It's shiny gold, but not too shiny. And then like a navy blue. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. You get this little pamphlet here it says colors by nature non-toxic and non-chemical additives. I wouldn't call these non-toxic. I'm just going to be very clear with you. Don't buy these for your children because there are genuine cobalt colors in here and cobalt salt is highly toxic, especially if inhaled. Um, but it can be a toxic by skin contact contact as well. Excuse me. But there is no cadmiums, so that's really, really good. Um, the finest quality pigments for superior light fastness. Let's see. And then what is this? This is all the different languages. Look at all those languages. Okay, none of them are mine, but that's okay because there's other people in the world besides just me and there's other languages. Okay, so this on top is like a dust cover, like what you might get in the fine expensive handbag. And then here are the tubes. Wow. Now I ordered mine on Amazon. I do want to say this. For a while I'd been looking at these on um, Jerry's and even dickflip.com at one time carried them but they don't anymore. And I thought, oh, they're so expensive and I don't need any more paint. And I genuinely did not. I don't need any paint. You guys know I don't need any watercolors. But the sale on Amazon, these were around 60 bucks. I couldn't even believe it because this set would probably run you, this is probably like $400 worth of paint in here here um, if you bought these tubes individually. So I'm super excited. I'm really glad that they did not count white and black in your in your set of 24. You get 26 colors. So they do give you a black and a white in their smaller seven milliliter tubes, which is still a lot of paint, but I don't want to pay for white and black. And they really kind of didn't make me. So I thank you guys for that. Here are the tubes. They look so luxurious. A lot of the time, I mean, I'm not even kidding. If you go to Jerry's Artorama or Blick or something and you want to order just one tube of like some of the higher series pigments like quinacridone rose, you might pay $18 and change upwards of $20 for one tube. So this was a fantastic deal and I could not pass it up. So here's what they look like. They're so beautiful just to look at. Not intended for use by children 14 and under. Yes, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. These are artist quality pigments. So I was interested in these because I heard that they contain honey, although I don't see that here. Um, in this information, but somebody had told me that these contain honey, like the M grams, which I love the honey. They're supposed to be very fine, finely milled. Some people had said they don't really granulate that much, which usually means they're very finely milled pigments and that they're very bright candy like vibrant colors. And uh, some people had actually complained on the downside of that, that they were too bright and vivid for landscape work. But here's my response to that. I would rather have the pure pigments, the pure bright colors, because you can always make a clean color dirt 
dirty, but you could never make that dirty, desaturated color clean again. So you can mix so, so much. And um, yeah, I can't wait to swatch these out and play with these, you guys. I'm really, really excited. Colors by Nature. Now here's um, a claim that Jerry Jodorama is touting about these, but I have not seen it anywhere in this source material. Um, I think it might just be silliness on Jerry Jodorama's part, but I could be wrong. Jerry Jodorama is claiming that th these paints are allowed to mature in Korean pots while classical music is played to the paint. Um, <laughs> you can't make this up. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's a gimmick. I, I don't I don't think this company is claiming that. I think it was a Jerry Jodorama thing. I love Jerry Jodorama, by the way. I really seriously do. But I don't see that anywhere here in the um, the source material. So I, I don't know. Maybe at one time they were claiming that. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to unpack this. And I'm going to set up a palette with these. We're going to take a look at it. And I will tell you right up front in advance that... Um, you get 26 paints here, 24 pure pigment colors. I won't be swatching the white or the black, and honestly, I, I definitely won't be adding the white or black to my palette because I don't use white and black watercolor. I mix my own chromatic blacks and I don't use white watercolor. That's a no-no for me, okay? The other thing that I will say is that there are three cobalt colors in here. Cobalt turquoise uh, or cobalt teal, uh, cobalt green deep and well that says cobalt turquoise hue hold on one second cobalt turquoise hue is pigment where's the pigment pb28 okay um hmm Okay, so that's still cobalt, so I don't know why they're calling it um, cobalt hue. But anyway, if you were here to see the cobalt colors, I won't be swatching those. I personally am not adding it to my palette. I don't use cobalt because I don't like how large the pigment particle size is. It makes them very um, opaque and chalky looking and granular, and I just personally don't like those colors. So those three cobalt-based colors I will not be swatching today, but the rest I will. We're gonna take a look and set up a palette. So if all that sounds good to you, then just keep right on watching. Okay, so I am back. I did want to share with you the palette that I'm setting these up in, and also I wanted to offer you some quick tips on how to put in your half pans in a metal tin uh, palette box like this, because I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with, and it doesn't matter what set it is they have, but they often have issues with the moving around in there. And look, I'm gonna flip this upside down. Nothing's coming out, nothing is moving, because I put these in properly. So what you want to do is, you see these tabs here? I, d I left this, these two are up, but you can see how this one's bent down, right? I left these up on purpose so you, I could show you. If you have str issue with these, this is going to help you out. So you want to take your tabs and bend them down, bend them down a decent amount. Can you see that? Hopefully you can on camera. And then you want to press your half pan in on an angle, right? So I'm going to put it in on an angle. Hopefully you can see me doing that. And then I'm going to push it in, you'll hear a click. Did you hear that good, nice snap? If you don't hear that, it's not in all the way. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm putting it in on an angle to get it in. Nice snap. And when I pick this up, nothing is moving around. Nothing is sliding around. So there's no need to use poster putty or glue tabs or dots. No matter what set you have, this will work. I am using this set that I got on Amazon. Now, Real quick, I just want to mention this because it's important. I'll leave a link for this in the description box because I know people are going to be interested. It is not an affiliate link. I'm going to say it again, not an affiliate link. If you click on the link and you buy something, I won't see a penny of it. I promise I'll make no money on it. So um, these were really affordable. I've been happy with the quality of these in the past. Um, earlier in the year, I bought this smaller one that I set up with my Daniel Smith watercolors. I've been happy with the quality of it. It doesn't stain too badly and there's been no rust so far. Um, this one, it says it holds 48 half pans or 24 full pans, but you really get 28 because there's an additional one on every row. I don't know why it says that. Now it says Passion for Masterpieces, but it's going to be sold under the title of Looning. I, I don't understand it. 
but here it is. I cleaned this up thoroughly. I always wash and clean a brand new metal box and all of its components, including the little half pans before I set anything up um, because sometimes oil is used or spray coatings can be used in the manufacturing process of these type of products and you don't want that in your watercolor paint. Um, it will affect the way that the paint performs, but it can also um, affect even the archivalness of your work and the acidity, you know, can turn the paper funny colors if there's oils and stuff in there. So I always do that. Completely forgot to mention the price of this um, watercolor palette. So this is also available on Amazon and I paid right around $15 or so for 26 full pans and the metal palette. You can't buy just 26 full empty pans hands anywhere for uh, around $15. So that's what I was thinking in my mind when I purchased it. It was like, well, it, you know, if even if the palette itself is garbage, then, you know, it'll be worth it because the ha you know, I'll still have the, the pans which are really thick and good quality by the way. And I actually have been enjoying the quality of this these palettes. They're not the best quality in the whole world. They're not Winsor Newton quality, but for the price, they're actually fantastic. And I figured even if I only get like a year or two out of it and then it takes a crap on me, I'll still have the full pans that I can transfer somewhere else. So you can't beat the price on this. So I will leave that linked up and I, I would suggest it. I would highly recommend it. And I didn't want to set up another porcelain palette. So anyway, the packaging on this is gorgeous. These Mission Gold watercolors, the navy blue and the gold. Oh my gosh, I have to say they nailed it. So here are the tubes. You get the color name is on there, the pigment information, light fast rating. Um, I love seeing that. Um, they are rating this a four stars PY3. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I've seen some of my artist friend do um, light fast tests on these and even their PY3 did really well in mass tone. I would watch out in tints for that. So there I'm going to do that. I'm going to just start setting this up, but I thought we'd do a couple together. It didn't go running all out on me, so that's nice. This is the lemon yellow, and should I just fill this up and then come back and swatch with us? We'll swatch together. Do you guys want to do that? Um, I don't know. This is permanent yellow light. Again, it didn't come all squashing out of there. I'm happy with that. Now this, I think, is azo yellow. It's a nice fluid consistency there. Um, PY154, yeah, I think that's Azo Yellow. I am really good with pigments, so I'll definitely point that out along the way. Nice consistency. They're definitely right. They didn't add any thickening agents to these. We'll do one more together, and then I'll go ahead and fill these up, because I don't want to waste everybody's time, and then we'll come back and maybe we'll swatch together or something. Once again, still killing it. Did not come out all over the place. Hmm... It's nice. This is permanent yellow deep and it's PY65. All right, I think, now the autumn orange I'm super excited about, so I have to do that one with you. This is PO36, this is Azo orange, and it's autumn right now. So yeah, again, not running all out of there. So that makes me happy to see that. It's not like oozing all over the place. A lot of watercolors do do that, but not these ones. Ooh, that's so pretty. That is so pretty. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I'm excited. I'm gonna fill this up and then we're gonna come back. I would like to mention if you want a nice even corner to corner fill, grab a little toothpick and just fill it in um, so that they all meet up. But um, I'm gonna do that and then meet you back once we're all done. So at this point, I did just want to hop on and let you know that if you're interested in a real time full swatch with me video, I've got you covered. I've already uploaded that as a separate video just because I know that not everybody wants to sit through 20 minutes of live real time swatching. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave that linked up in the video description as well as the iCards up above. 
Um, since the time of filming, I've also completed two paintings with these Mission Gold watercolors, and I'm working on a full and comprehensive review. So that will be coming in the future. So subscribe so you won't miss that if you're interested. But for now, just know that these are very high quality professional watercolors. They are very finely milled pigments, very, very smooth. Um, just excellent, excellent quality. Now here in the swatching, as you can see, I was doing what I would usually do for a swatch. I would add like the full mass tone up at the top and then dilute the bottom half with water. And I was still pretty much getting the full mass strength of each of those colors, even still doing that because they are so richly pigmented. So I did work on a separate swatch chart that you'll see in the full review where I start off very slow and kind of glazed up um, so that you can see more of the values that you can achieve and more of the glazing possibilities but I'll save that for the full review but due to the fact that these watercolors are so highly pigmented I definitely recommend you know your softer squirrel brushes your thirstier brushes that can hold a lot of water and help dilute that paint for your initial layers so gosh, look at that. Look how vibrant those colors are. My God. Okay, so um, I would definitely like to mix. I'm going to find out. I think that their um, sap green mixture is a combination of their green gold and either the bamboo green or the viridian. One of these phthalo greens, either the blue or the yellow shade. I'm not certain. But... Um, Oh, I see little particles of sediment happening in that red-brown. Um, a little bit of granulation on their ultramarine blue. Not too much, but there's definitely some. But the rest look really smooth. Now, comparatively, if I compare... I don't have any, like, exact duplicates besides that one, PY3. This is um, Daniel Smith in my hand. I think there's definitely more pigment with these Mission Golds compared to the Daniel Smith for the lemon yellow, the PY3. Um, Daniel Smith seems a bit softer and a little bit more green. Let's see. Um, what else do I have that's kind of similar? Hmm, not a lot on this palette. Here we go. PV19 to PV19. That's warmer, more like M. Graham's. Um... Pigment Violet 23, Diox Violet to Diox Violet. Definitely more pigment on their Ultramarine to French Ultramarine. Um, their Thalo Blue. I think I like Daniel Smith's Thalo Blue better, just being very honest. Um, and their Yellow Ochre is very transparent as well. I really like Daniel Smith, by the way. Um, but overall, can we just talk about the color vibrancy here. I mean, they are just popping. Look at that. Let's bring in, um, oops, I just got a drop of water on that. Let's bring in the core watercolors. Magenta to magenta. Really close vibrancy wise. Um, let's see, these are a little bit different pigments, but orange, transparent pyro orange to different to pyro orange. Um, yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. Quinn Red to Quinn Rose. Ultramarine to Ultramarine. Thalo Blue to... Th I don't like that one they're calling Cerulean Blue. I don't... It's a personal preference, but it's... Mm -mm, I don't know why. I just don't like that hue that much. I definitely prefer other brands for that one. But this one, see, ironically seems a little bit more like what I would want but I don't know I mean it's that's personal preference yellow ochre to yellow ochre well this is PY73 real yellow ochre and that's the synthetic yellow oxide uh, raw umber to raw umber what else do we have this is PY154 yes so there's that comparatively for you to go ahead and take a look. Let me grab my Sennelier watercolors. Okay, here are some of my Sennelier watercolors. I have more on another piece of paper. Don't ask why. <laughs> so here's PY3 to PY3. Um, lemon yellow to yellow, lemon yellow. Very comparable. Although the clarity on that seems maybe just a little better. Um, this is warm yellow to warm yellow, although this is PY154 and this is PY74. Um, Sennelier Red, 
which is um, which is pyrrole red to pyrrole red. I mean, they're they're both a little little different. They're each a little different. I think Sennelier's is a little more blue hued. Oh, is that too bright all of a sudden on that camera? Hold on one second. There you go. I turned the brightness down just a tiny bit. You never know what this camera is gonna do. Yeah. So Sennelier red to Sennelier to Pyrrole. Yeah, I think their Pyrrole red is just a little warmer. Um, PV19 to PV19 there. Sennelier. Here we go. Um, I think the vibrancy is just out of this world. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, ultramarine, ultramarine. I really love Sennelier watercolors, by the way. Let me grab the other sheet that I have that has a few more of their colors on it because I do have a uh, pigment green 36. I like Mission Golds better because Sennelier's felt a little bit chunky-ish to me. It's hard to explain, but do you see that texture? This one really doesn't have that. Um, Doxes and Violet to Doxes and Violet. Magenta, permanent magenta to permanent magenta. Although they're calling theirs Helios Purple or something like that, but it is PR122. So the vibrancy, very, very nice. Let's see. Let's see, do I have my ones or Newton? Swatches, I do. Y'all are in luck, I do. Okay, now sit now Windsor and Newton, though I've not been super happy with the pigment strength, the pigment quality are usually are very good. Like they, they're very vibrant. Um, permanent rose. Yeah, I think Mission Gold is actually brighter. Oh, permanent Quinn Magenta to Quinn Magenta. Yeah, I think Mission Gold held its own really well. Let's put three up against one another. All three of these. See all that? This is Coors Magenta. All this is PR122. Yeah, I mean, it's it's playing with the big boys. There's no question about it. Windsor Blue. Yeah, I think it's comparable to the Windsor Blue. Um, French Ultramarine to their Ultramarine Light. Okay. Um, uh, their Yellow Deep to yellow deep. I think Mission Gold is a little cleaner. What else do I have? Um, that color kind of sediment, sedimented out a little bit. It's not a big deal. Their Burn Sienna number two is really gorgeous. I want to see how that mixes. Uh, yellow ochre to yellow ochre. I think they're both the synthetic form, by the way. No, no, that one's natural. I'm sorry. Um, hmm. <laughs> what else could we do? Well, I mean, that gives you an idea. Here's Windsor Red to Permanent Red Deep. They're both the same pigment. Again, I think the Mission Gold is just a little bit warmer. That variation is a little bit warmer. So that's nice to have. Although I will say, it's not, it's, there's not a true warm red in this set. So if I had to be really nitpicky um, and kind of pick... Like, see, this is PR255, a Pyrrol Scarlet. It would sit between these two on the color wheel. So, it, we, you could definitely mix this with your red-orange and get something really close. Let's do that. Let's do that while we have, while we have you here. Let me make sure my brush is clean so I'm not contaminating colors. Oops, I got more water. Oh, boy. Oh, well. I'm having a hard time today with this setup. So what did I say? Let's take um, red orange. See, it's really hard when they're fresh. So, you know, I prefer to work from dried cakes of color. But again, I don't know how, that's so freaking vibrant. I don't know how these are gonna dry. Am I gonna regret the decision of not putting a little bit of honey in there? Let me know. Let me know. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that orange to the red. Mix it up. And now let's let's get enough water in there to get it to flow. Now let's kind of see that. Okay. So that's really nice. 
That's really very nice. Let me see a little bit more of that orange in there. Get a little bit more. Oh, and then I got a lot more. So that's nothing against the paint. That's just what happens when you work from fresh paint. Okay, that looks that looks closer to me to like a cadmium red light or cadmium red pale type hue. So that's beautiful. So as you could see, you can definitely mix and and find yourself a spectrum of colors there. And because their pyrrole red is a little bit warmer, it didn't seem to go dirty on me um, at all. So that's really nice. That's one of the things I've heard quite a bit is that they it's it's difficult to mix mud with these because they're so vibrant. So I'm gonna grab, usually I use my Neptunes for glazing. So let's try that. And let's pick another color. We'll pick uh, that rose, or one of the roses we'll pick. They're not sticky, by the way. Like, M. Grams can be a little sticky. That doesn't bother me. But um, these don't feel sticky at all. Yeah, even with a very light touch on this paper, though it's not arches, that did that thalo blue really did lift up a tiny bit. But it might be this this paper. I want to give it every opportunity that I possibly can, but it is glazing nicely. So that's good. Um let's let's take some of that uh, green from over there. Let's take a couple greens together and glaze on over. Hmm. So, so far they're glazing nicely, although on this paper, and certain papers will be different, I do think that it's lifting up a tiny bit, smearing a little bit uh, what's happening underneath. But it's not uh, too terrible either. It's not like it's a deal breaker, it's not like it's smudging like student grade paint would. Because um, student grade paint, as you know, because there's so much filler, it's really hard to get good glazes. Those are drying so vibrant over there. They're beautiful. So I wanted to see what kind of a sap green that I could get. And I do think, I do think it was their bamboo green, what they're calling bamboo green, and what they're calling green gold mixed together. So I'll take that and I'll take some of that, mix it together, and let's see what kind of a Okay, now that looks more like green gold to me when it's just a little bit of that green. Now let's add more and see what we can get. Yeah, that's pretty. It's gorgeous. The colors are mixing gorgeous. One thing I noticed, and I thought it was a fluke over here when it happens and I didn't say anything, but as I'm looking at it now, it seems to me like they aren't moving a ton. Like, like they are moving, but when I put two colors up next to each other and they were at different levels of dryness, it doesn't seem like they wanna just whoosh out into one another. So let me wet this area out here and take a color that I know should flow a lot, like the magenta. Get a little water in it and let's see what happens. Okay. So they will flow, but they're doing it kind of on their own time. They're gonna take their sweet time. That doesn't necessarily mean a lot of filler either, by the way, because it doesn't look like that's the case. Um, they said in their brochure, in their information, that they're only using like natural binder or whatever, which usually the binder is gum arabic, but I'm wondering if when you, now like when you use gum arabic, for example, as a medium, the more gum arabic you add, you will increase the transparency in the gloss, but it also slows the spread of the paint. And I'm wondering if there's more gum arabic in these and that's why that's happening. Cause I don't think there's filler. It's not like that. It says, Mission Gold watercolors are created with only non-toxic pigments. That's kind of a lie. 
um, and non-chemical additives. They are intensely pigmented without gummy thickening agents resulting in unparalleled color and vibrancy. That's only kind of a lie because of the fact that um, cobalt's absolutely not non-toxic. That's bull. Uh, Mission watercolors offer outstanding color control. Let's see. Something in here mentioned mentioned the um here we go it says um surpass industry standards by using only cosmetic grade preservatives okay now this needs to be said for there is someone out there that has to hear this today don't put this on your face don't be stupid just don't be stupid this isn't face paint don't don't be stupid okay cosmetic grade preservatives doesn't mean this is skin safe okay i'm not saying that's what mission gold's trying to say i'm saying some of you yeah, listen some of you know who you are okay i have seen people on amazon putting those um watercolor crayons from karen dosh on their face and decorating their kids faces with them so you know this needs to be said Alrighty then. So it does move and whoosh out, but it takes time. And there's that means probably no ox gall or anything in there um, that's making them really whoosh or whatever. So it looks like if you want to blend like two colors together, let's say I wanted to use like an orangey color. These are very intensely pigmented and I think beginners might have a little bit of trouble only because of the fact that, now see, they did blend into each other. They did blend into each other. I won't say they don't, but you might want to just help it along a little bit also. So the reason I say beginners might have a little bit of trouble is because they're so intensely pigmented that you might have a tendency to just get too much on your brush. But the fact that they whoosh out a bit slower might also be an advantage because if you find it difficult to control the spread of your watercolor and you know it moves too far outside the boundary of where you put it hey maybe this could be your watercolor paint and that's it that's all i have for you guys today so that is my unboxing first impressions of the mission goal watercolors if you have these let me know down below what you think of these um do you like them if you don't tell me why um and leave me some comments because I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Overall, if you can get these for that $60 price point, especially for some of you, this could be your only opportunity to get artist grade watercolors for a D for student grade prices, honestly. Because times are really hard right now. The economy is kind of struggling real bad right now. And um, if you are just getting into watercolors or maybe you've never given yourself an artist grade set of watercolors, I think you'd be very happy with these. Whether you're a beginner, a hobbyist, a professional artist, these pigments are definitely light fast. These pigments, you can sell your artwork when you use them. I'm gonna put these through the paces and I'm gonna give them a, a fair review a while down the road. But so far, just judging by first impression, 100% they're worth the $60 price point. Grab them. Grab them now. And um, that's it for today. So as always, have a great day. Have a blessed day. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.